Hey, Space Cowboy. Today, I'm going to be painting up something not Warhammer. We're going to be painting up some of the models from Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade. If you've been following the channel for the last couple weeks, you'll know that I went to Fanime recently, and there I was challenged with the task of finding something to paint for today's episode. And what I found was Cowboy Bebop Space Serenade, because this board game has miniatures, guys, and I'm super hyped for it. <laughs> you make it sound so simple, Angela, but it is anything but. For you see, we, and by we, I mean myself and the other cultists, agree that you have been a little over-reliant on contrast paint recently. So, we have decided, as a wrinkle for this, this challenge, you may use any paint that you want, we are not cruel, but any paint may only be used on one miniature. On meaning, one miniature? Meaning if you want to use Basilicanum Gray, mm -hmm. you can, but you can only use it on, say, Jet. Once you've used Basilicanum Gray on Jet, it may not be used on any of the others. I think I understand. This is going to require a little bit of planning. Let's get to it. All right, with this challenge, I've actually really had to be very thoughtful about what colors I'm using. So as you can see, I've picked out just a few, just a few to- Just a few, just, my chaotic bottom. Just a few, it's just a few colors, but the idea is- You know you can only use each one on one mini, right? And there's three more of these SOBs to go. There are, but thankfully, the Cowboy Bebop characters have relatively distinctive colors and while I am using a lot of colors here, the idea is I want at least a base color, a wash, and then I can use that base color as a highlight again to get some really simple details out of these models. So I'm hoping this works out really well and I'm excited to get started. I'm going to be working on Faye and Jet first, so let's do this. Faye, I think, is going to be the more complicated of the two, so let's start with her. Between her iconic purple hair, her yellow outfit, and her very pale skin, there's a lot of opportunity for some high contrast, which could potentially look a little garish if I'm not careful. So we're gonna start with her skin today, and we're going to begin with a very pale, very warm colored tawny flesh tone, which I'm going to apply to her lovely face, her long arms, and her long legs. Once I have that down, we're gonna come back in with a very pale, very thinned Seraphim Sepia Wash, which is going to go on everything with the exception of the area of her legs where the stockings are. Those we're going to be painting up here in a second with a different color. This color is really just there to help emphasize her face a little bit and draw a little bit of detail out on her arms. Now, with that done, we need to move on to those stockings. And for this, I'm going to pull out my Speed Paint Crusader skin. This, I think, is going to give me that perfect pantyhose, slightly darker than skin, slightly reddish tint that you always see in like classic artwork with ladies wearing stockings. And this works exceptionally well. I love the way that ends up drying on her flesh to give this really nice, subtle stocking color tone. And because we put her flesh tone beneath it, it really shines through and makes it look a little bit more natural. Now, with her skin and stockings taken care of, there's a couple of iconic details that I need to work on next, and the first of which is going to be her yellow outfit. I have always been jealous of the fact that Faye was able to rock this yellow outfit. It's such a bold color tone, and I could never wear it myself, but today at least I get to paint it. So for that, I'm going to start with Averlyn Sunset, because if you actually look at it, in most of the art for Faye, it actually has a little bit more of a golden color tone, which is why I'm using Averlyn Sunset, because it does have that goldenrod color. Once that's down, we're going to give it a light wash using a Yondin Yellow. This will settle into the recesses, making some of those little details show up, all those little creases in her pants and top. But it's also going to give it a little bit of a finish that I think gives it a pleather look, which I've always kind of imagined her costume actually being, so I think the effect really works well. After that, I want to move on to that glorious purple hair, which I was so, so also jealous of because I was watching Cowboy Bebop at a time where I wasn't allowed to dye my hair and I always wanted to have purple hair. Of course I do now, but let's work on phase. For that, I'm going to be using Xeris Purple, a very lovely bright purple color tone that I'm going to follow up with a wash using Druchi Violet. This will settle into the recesses, giving a little bit of texture to the hair. And honestly, I love the way that it darkens it. It's perfectly fey. Once we're done with that, there are a couple of details that I take care of, like her 
straps that she has on her outfit, the suspenders specifically, which will get painted in black. Her eyes will get dotted with a little bit of green. And then her boots, I'm actually going to leave just in the standard Gracier paint that I use as a primer because she's got sort of whitish blue boots and it just works. The last thing I need to take care of is that gun that she's holding. And for this, we're going with plate mail steel. And then we're going to give it a light wash using the same black I used on the suspenders to just settle into those recesses and pop a little bit of those details. With that, she is complete and we need to move on to Jet. Faye is all but complete other than her base, which I'll get to after I've taken care of Jet, but I just have to gush over how pleased I am with this model because two things worked out really, really well and I wasn't fully anticipating it, but I had hoped. First of all, her leggings, like her little tights, I love what the Crusader skin did for that to give them that distinct sort of pinky, skin color tone, but not quite actually matching the pale flesh, which is precisely what she has on her in her character model. And the purple hair with the yellow actually came out perfectly. I'm just super happy with it. The other thing I will just say very quickly is her eyes, they came out so well. She has such an attitude. I don't know if you'll be able to see them super well on screen. Focus, there we go. Ah, oh, but just look, look at that dude. I feel like it's perfect for her. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to nail anybody else's eyes as well as I have hers, but I am just so happy that of all the characters I think I got spot on, Faye was the one. It's that time of the video where I interrupt to tell you about my Patreon and to let you know that we just added a Discord server, which all tiers get access to. So if you're wanting a way to chat with me, share with me your projects, or just tell me what board games you're playing, definitely make sure to check the link below and check out my Patreon. All right, I'm super pleased with how Faye's looking, so let's move on to Jet next. For him, we're going to focus on his prosthetic arm a little bit here because I think that's one of the more iconic elements of Jet, and I wanna make sure I get this right because if you look at it in the show, it's meant to look a little bit flesh-toned. So let's start with his flesh, and for that I'm going to be using Dorado Flesh, which is one of the new tones from the Army Painter Skin Tone set, which I have not got to use very much of, and I'm very hyped to do so. And in fact, this project has a lot of opportunities for me to use a lot of different colors from that particular set. So with this slightly more darker, more tanned flesh tone, we're going to paint his face and his one fleshy arm. After we're done with that, before I actually move on to the metallics, I'm going to use Dungeon, I think it's called Dungeon Gray. It's one of the ones that came from Game Master series from, uh, from Army Painter. And I'm gonna use this on his face as well as his hair. And I'm going to be using it as my base coat for any of my metallics, which will go on his prosthetic arm. Once I'm done with that, and frankly, I'm very happy with how his hair and beard and eyebrows turned out. They just, they look so good. I'm very, very proud of myself. I don't normally do well with faces, but they turned out fantastic. But we need to move on to that prosthetic arm. And for this, I'm going with Rune Lord Brass. This is a nice sort of bronze color tone. And I think it actually matches the Dorado flesh really, really well. And meaning that it actually works for Jet perfectly. Once I have this color down on his prosthetic, we're going to go back over his normal flesh and the prosthetic arm using a bit, a very thinned, skeleton horde as a wash. This will help unify everything, deepen his flesh tone a little bit more, and I just love the way it's looking. With that done, we need to move on to his outfit. And this is probably one of the colors that I maybe second guess myself on using here on Jet because I think the blue could also have worked really well for Spike. But we're going with Night Lord's blue on Jet's outfit. Once I have this down in an even coating, because it does go on kind of pale and you do a couple of different layers of it, I'm going to then apply a wash using Griff Charger Gray. If you actually look at a lot of the art for Jet, he has a little bit of a greenish gray undertone to his outfit. And I think this wash is going to help pull that off because that's what the Griff Charger Gray color is. With that done, there are a couple of quick details I do using a little bit of red, a little bit of army green, and after that, oh, and some silver, actually. We do a little bit of detail in silver, but after that, the last thing I need to use is a bit of Uriel Yellow on the eagle on his back, as well as the dashes on his collar. This goes on really well. I love how bold and bright this color tone is against that deeper blue, and with that, we can move on to their bases. All right, both models are looking absolutely fantastic. I am pleased with both of their faces, which is not something that I normally say, but we aren't here to talk about faces, we're here to talk about bases. And this is one of the other elements that I was able to unify because I talked to Chaos Cultists about it. I'm like, I want these guys to all look like they're coming from the same game, dang it. So I'm gonna use the same texture paint on all of them. Now, if, 
Exactly. Now, if these models hadn't been already attached to these bases, I would have applied them to some Necromunda bases that I have to really make them look like they were in the Bebop because it really has a sort of spaceship vibe to it. However, they are attached and I don't want to risk cutting their feet accidentally by unattaching them. So I'm going to use a bit of astrogranite debris to give myself a neutral, spacey feeling base and call it done. Now, let's take a look at the first two models. And here they are, Jet and Faye. I'm really happy with how the first two of my five models from Cowboy Bebop's Space Serenade by Japanime Games turned out. They honestly turned out way better than I was anticipating because I wasn't one expecting the models to be quite as well defined and sculpted as they are. Like kudos to Japanime Games. They actually did an excellent job with these figures, but also like, Anime models, they have a little bit flatter faces sometimes, and it always stresses me out having to paint them. But I actually think I did a really, really good job. And I'm looking forward to painting the next three because now- <laughs> You think that you did well so far, but how many paints have you used? You're out of options for next time. He thinks that. But you know that big pile that we showed near the beginning of the episode? I actually didn't end up even using all of those that I picked out for the characters. Faye, for example, ended up not having her red jacket, which I thought I was going to have to paint. I just didn't look at the model correctly, and it turns out she doesn't have it. So that was even just two colors right there that I was able to eliminate. I don't actually think this is going to be too tough of a challenge. Honestly, Vincent, or Vicious, I don't know why I want to keep calling him Vincent. Vicious is the one that I'm the most concerned with actually painting because he doesn't have as much color variety on him than any of the other characters. Spike, I have his outfit picked out already. I know exactly what blues I'm going to be using and I'm very excited because I think it's going to look pretty spot on. Ed, I guess, is maybe the other one that I'm a little bit nervous because she has that white shirt, but Faye turned out really great, and she was the one that I was actually the most scared to paint because she's got all of that lovely flesh there. And painting ladies' flesh and making it look like soft and supple is sometimes difficult, but I think Faye looks fantastic. I hope you guys have enjoyed this first episode of me painting up these figures, and hopefully you'll check out next week's. Before I head out, I do want to go ahead and give a huge thank you to my patrons for making it so content like this can continue to happen. Without your guys' support, we wouldn't be doing this, so thank you very, very much. I've been Angela. I'll see you in next episode, Space Cowboy, and I hope you have a wonderful hobby night.